Okay, this is gonna be just a very chill flow. Um, if you're on your yoga mat, that's good. Um, if you can sit down on your bum with your feet in front of you, touching, stop it, please go lay down. If your feet in front of you touching, like make a diamond, a large diamond, if that feels comfortable and available, do that. If not, please pause and get like a, you can get a cushion and sit on a cushion or a pillow or sit in a chair. And if you sit in a chair, just have your legs relaxed in front of you. Make sure you're sitting up and out of your low back. So there's a lengthening, a lifting out of the side bodies and the low back through the rib cage, through the stomach, up through the armpit. There's a gentle but very definite softening down of the shoulders, lifting up through the back of the neck, slight drop of the chin, because remember the neck is an extension of your spine, and then feel like a pulling up on the crown of your head. I know you maybe heard stuff like that in yoga classes, but like that lengthening, it's energetic almost, with the sustaining of the elbows down. Wherever you are, let your palms face up. So you're either sitting in a chair where you feel comfortable and you're not crunched down, so you're not rolled forward, and you're not arching your low back. Okay, so I usually lift up. If I'm in a chair, I would lift up my bum, tuck my tailbone down, opposite of sticking out the booty, and then sit down. Make sure it feels smart. Make sure you feel good. And have your palms facing up. I like to think of it as putting, having uh, the palms facing up being in the field of receptivity. And just close your eyes. You can breathe in and breathe out through the mouth. Make a nose or not. Make a nose or not. Make a noise or not. Please inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth three times. <sighs> So if you're sitting on the floor or yoga mat and that yoga mat and that's comfortable, please extend your feet in front of you. So it's not Baddha Konasana or cobbler's pose where the feet are really close in or butterfly, but you have like a large diamond with your feet, okay? And palms face up. If you're in your chair, same deal, palms face up, arms up. Relax the shoulders. Use your core strength. And if the arms look like this, that's fine too. We're gonna hold for 120 seconds, breathing into the belly, keeping the face soft, attention to third eye point between and slightly above your eyebrows. However high your, sh your arms go, that your shoulders remain in place is where we want to be. Let the palms face each other for this. This is when we're turning the breath on, so you're not just chilling here, not breathing. Let each inhale start to get a little bit deeper into the belly. Each exhale, make sure all the air is out.
20 seconds. Keep breathing in deep and breathing out long. Guys, open, inhale, shoulders drop lower, but reach a little bit higher with the arms. Exhale, let the hands land where they do. So maybe it's gonna be the shins, maybe the knees. If you're on the chair, just on your knees, maybe closer to the feet. Relax the shoulders, inhale, exhale out. <sighs> you're welcome to smoke pot or not. I am using the standard, it's really nice, I charged it. So here we are, inhale, lengthen everything. If you're on the chair, you're just over your knees, except the shoulders, they stay low, and then exhale wherever it is that you land, where you're not gonna round your spine, okay? So maintain the integrity of the spine. If it's here, cool. If it's here, cool. If Honda wasn't on me, I'd go sideways so you could see that my back's completely flat. And then drop the head. I don't mean drop the head like this. Make sure it's with a straight head that you're just maintaining the integrity of the relationship between your neck and your spine, which is that it is one. So we're not going to have the head jacked up, okay? And then breathe for three deep breaths. Relax everywhere. Notice anywhere, including your face, including your shoulders, that you're holding on to tension and release. So heart forward towards your toes or your knees, and then fold, exhale, three deep breaths. With each inhale, you're lengthening the body. With each exhale, you're taking that length and intensifying the posture. towards the chest. If you're on your chair, just shake your legs out and reposition yourself so that you feel comfortable and that you're not slouching over and you're not um, in your lumbar spine. So you might want to re-shift. If you're on the floor and you have, and if, by the way, if you have low back issues and you're on the floor or if you're in the chair, you can jump down to the floor. If you have um, a tight low back, wide legs only for this part if you have zero back issues completely healthy spine then we're going to do paschimottanasana which is a straightforward bend but we're going to establish dandasana first which is the position we're in before we fold so um let's get into wide legs is going to be i hope 90 percent of the people watching this because um, most people to protect the low back, it's gonna make sense to have wide legs here and you'll probably benefit more from the stretch. Only if you're like been doing ballerina forever like me, do the closed legs here. Plus we haven't warmed up, blah, blah, blah. So wide legs, let's assume, I'm even gonna do wide legs over that. And strong. This is a variation of Dandasana, which would usually be with straight legs and you're welcome to do that if that's your thing. Make sure your sitting bones are on the floor. Lift up and out of the low belly, out of the low back. Always breathing. 
Now raise your arms up, relax your shoulders. Hands by your sides, right by your hips, and ground. Make sure that the front thigh muscles are active, shins, and the feet, or the ankles should be off the floor. You're not so much going to lock your knees, but you're engaged. Let's breathe here for five, dropping the chin slightly, bowing the chin down towards the inner wisdom, I like to think of it. Into the belly. Faces relax, count your nails. Make them a little longer, count your exhales. Squeeze your elbows in, activate Paravanda by having your feet flex. Empty all the air out, you'll feel a squeezing when the belly comes in towards the spine. Now reach up through there. Now maybe you're just gonna land on your thighs if you haven't been stretching for a while. Maybe your shins. Maybe you'll touch your toes, who cares? Be in the place that feels smart for you today. Inhale, shoulders low, lengthening. Exhale, find your perfect place to access space in the back of the legs, five deep breaths. Lengthen a little. Exhale, so maybe it's here. Just go a little deeper. It feels safe, it feels smart. Three breaths. Bring the right foot in. Yeah, so if you could definitely come down off the floor. The right foot comes into the inside of the left thigh. It's called Janu Sirsasana. We're gonna access the adrenal glands and the kidneys, as well as stretching the back of the left leg. So reciprocal inhibitions, inhibition is one of my favorite anatomical laws. It says if the front of the muscle is engaged, the back of that same muscle naturally relax more. So fire up your front thigh muscle, arms up, shoulders low. My right foot is into the inside of my left thigh. If your right knee is healing, have it out to the right. Okay, either way, inhale. Turn your body slightly left to access this right lower back area. Exhale, always land where it makes sense. Five deep breaths.
Send the shoulders back, exhale, fold. Come up in here, use the core. And exhale, the hands by the sides. Right knee points towards the ceiling. If that, as always, if everything makes sense, okay? Right knee's gonna come in close, right foot's gonna come in close as possible. Right hand, inhale. Keep the left leg active. Exhale, your right hand's gonna find a flat position behind your back, preparing for a twist. Inhale, left arm up. Hook and twist your left elbow around your right knee. Keep both sitting bones on the floor. Let your, there's muscles you can stretch and strengthen in your eyes. Look far back to the right. Inhale, lift. And with each exhale, twist a little more. Just gentle counter switch the other way. Counter switch, counter stretch. Ooh. Oh, that feels so good. So either just switch legs if you've taken more than 25 classes of yoga and you know without me teaching you what a chaturanga vinyasa is, then you can do that to reset the spine. We're gonna do the other side. If you know how to get to plank and move with your breath, what a chaturanga vinyasa is, do it. Otherwise, please just switch legs. Janu Sirsasana, second side. Um, if your left knee is healing, maybe your right one wasn't and your left is, you just have your left leg out like that. If it's available, left foot to the inside of the right leg, arms up, left, uh, both shoulders down, breathe in, turn a little to the right. Breathe out, fold forward, where you maintain that straight flat back such thing as a flat back, but the concept, right? Um, and you feel it in the left lower back. And obviously we're getting a stretch in the right leg. Activate reciprocal inhibition by firing up the front thigh.